Hello and welcome to the second Sakurada special, although we will be covering a little bit more than Sakurada. Indeed. Um, we will be covering Sakurada Reset episodes 9, 10, and 11, as well as a little bit of Akashic Records. Mm -hmm. Which is great. So I am Rolando, and joining me today is my co-host, Alec. What's up, everybody? So... Um, let's start off with episode nine of Sakurada Reset. Let's so do it. in this episode, we have a flashback to when Kay and Haruki are still in middle school. And this is basically just after Soma dies. Two weeks after. Oh, two to weeks. To be after. exact, I believe, okay. yes. Um, so <laughs> tell me, Alec, what do you think about the basically what happens like <laughs> in episode nine yeah you know like because we cover basically haruki can't reset mm -hmm. and k is having this issue with resets and like how they could have these consequences like what mm -hmm. do you think um well i kind of i kind of want to think i just want to mention the the previous episode had the they were saying that haruki doesn't want to be hated by k it seemed like there was going to be this big like fight super super misleading it was her just being insecure that he hates her now because she has this reset ability and they both think that the reset killed soma and so uh k contacted the bureau and was talking to unknown person whether and to be like oh did you investigate it and they did and they decided that <laughs> they decided that um the reset had nothing to do with soma's death and that's what they ended up um, coming to the conclusion of. But he's still kind of, uh, or well, they said it doesn't have anything to do with it. But he said it's one hundred percent. And they're like, well, we can't deny the possibility, I guess. And then he was, and then they were also assuming that uh, he that he's the only one who knew that she was alive before the reset. And they were like, well, maybe you're lying or whatever. Um, <clears throat> what so what was the question again what do i oh, think like, of the, what do you think about like this whole consequences thing it's kind of oh, like a butterfly oh. effect yeah i i think that there definitely could be some consequences i also think that it was nice that they finally brought this up i don't think they've mentioned it no, before in the show and so it was nice to finally see them kind of like bring up the idea that oh we're making we're changing the the past future right if you um, can remember from episode four of the podcast we kind of talked about this mm -hmm. a little bit about how um, these consequence, the consequences of resetting right. can, you know, affect this stuff that happens. Cause you know, obviously Soma dies. Right. Um, so this is the first time they've kind of covered the actual like philosophy behind it in the show. Mm -hmm. Um, what do you think? Um, because Kay essentially says it's not the reset ability that's changing these things. It's actually like my own decision making. So he's saying everything is a result of like one's own actions. Mm -hmm. um, and like, in a sense, like, you know, you could think of that as true. Like everyone has their own responsibility and, and all this stuff. What do you think about his sort of pragmatic approach to things? Cause like now he wants to start resetting again. Mm -hmm. Um, whether to save the people he can whether or not that affects other people negatively um i think his idea of what the, what he wants to do is actually pretty pretty good because he he's not like i just want to save this one guy and screw it if this other guy's ruined he's like i want to what i believe what he said at one point was i want to create as much happiness for a large amount of people even if it hurts like it makes one person miserable or something like that so i mean i think it's a pretty um <clears throat> is the word art altruistic pragmatism pragmatism yeah. okay um it's it's a pretty good approach um i mean it i feel like haruki is the one who's like i don't want to hurt anyone or whatever and she just kept resetting and then that's why she looks to k who's like willing to hurt that one person um i also was thinking just now that possibly soma's death isn't necessarily a result of of his actions or resetting, but because apparently she has this future ability, right? That she can see the future. Mm -hmm. Perhaps she knew that they were going to reset. And then she's like, well, after this reset, I'll kill myself. 
but because before there wasn't that anything about it or whatever and she was fine and then perhaps it was her actions that changed the future because she may forget but she still can remember her own ability yeah and things like that so i'm wondering if she was like well they're gonna do this then they'll reset then i'll put this plan into motion after that so that's kind of what i was thinking so it wasn't his actions or haruki's it was actually soma's actions that led to that which i mean i guess that makes sense because she did die but (laughs) right and like this leading into the next episode episode 10 where they Mm -hmm. do resurrect soma we do get the scene where they rip the picture Mm -hmm. and she's holding you know the mcguffin Mm -hmm. and she specifically that soma remembers um this event being three days after they save the the little girl Mm -hmm. right Uh, when the mom's trying to leave the town yeah um so she clearly like has this whole motive to set all of these things in action because she has herself being taken like her picture being taken of by mm-hmm. Sasano, holding the, guy. the MacGuffin out. Yeah, with, like while he's she's standing at that place where she first met Kay. So mm-hmm. like she clearly knows that she can go and die for some sort of reason that she mm-hmm. kind of hasn't explained yet, and then be resurrected two years later mm-hmm. because she sees the future. Right. Mm-hmm. What do you think about? Why do you think she put all of this into play? Why? That's a <laughs> that's a big question. Um, I mean, her own <clears throat> her own reason for it was she wants to make Kay the protagonist of her story that she creates. Sorry, oops. Um, oops. <laughs> <laughs> she wants to make Kay the protagonist of this story that she's creating, and I think in effect she's also turning K into the MacGuffin because the MacGuffin is supposed to be the thing that controls all the abilities. But you see by the end of the 10th episode, he's controlling the one girl with the other dude to share the ability and Haruki. And he has like, he's got like not necessarily direct power over it, but all these people trust him and he can just be like, I need you to do this and you to do this. And they're like, all right. And then it's done. And so he's kind of turning into the useless little rock that's like, oh, I can control all the powers, but now he actually can. And I mean, maybe she's doing it because she's trying to avoid her fate of ending up like the witch. Mm -hmm. Um, And so she's like, if I can turn him into this MacGuffin where he can use all the powers, perhaps he can get into a situation where he can save me from being held in a room for my entire life. Right. I think what you said right there is kind of exactly what I'm thinking Mm -hmm. with she's trying to prevent her fate from being sealed the same way that the witch's fate was sealed Mm -hmm. because hold on (laughs) um because the witch uh, and sasano her boyfriend like they couldn't avoid the fate Mm -hmm. that she suffered and then you've got soma who kind of puts this plan out and like whether or not this is actually like plant pre-planned to happen. Like the Bureau is like, you know, understands all this is going to happen. Um, or they have the future lady too. So they know someone's going to come along, but it doesn't seem Mm. like maybe they have the full picture because it doesn't seem like the witch, um, particularly likes working for the Bureau because they lock her up. So Mm -hmm. like she could, you know, be affecting things herself to, you know, change, change everything. Um, but I do think that possibly the reason why Soma did this was if she does die and then is quote unquote revived by be- being pulled out of the picture. So we end with that episode like where she asks Kay because she sends she has the guy that can do the in brain voicemail yeah, messages like, tell you like a message at mm-hmm. a specific with time. your own voice. Like, he's like, oh, yeah, like, I'm supposed to deliver this message to my, like, to um, Soma, uh, like, at this specific time. Mm-hmm. 6.30, three days after they saved the lady. Right. Which is two years later. <laughs> and the question is, is this new Soma from the picture, is that Soma, is it the same? It's this Swamp Man um, idea brought up again. Mm-hmm. They bring where that up again. It's like they, she has the same appearance and personality, but they do know that 
the, the past Soma died mm -hmm. and that this one's a new one, a, a, a Swamp Man Soma, like, does she hear the message or not? She asks Kay, like, what do you think? Who did you want to meet? Did you want to meet the the old Soma or do you want to meet the one that's not like that Soma? Right. So she does say yes, though, when he asks, well, did you hear the voice? And she said, yes, I think she was just answering his question. It's like a weird mistranslation, oh, I believe, because okay. she asks him, like, who did you want to meet? I think right, you'll have right you'll you'll say the correct answer. Mm -hmm. um, I think it's just a a mistranslation. Um, it's because, like, I think normally, like, when you're asked a question in Japanese, like, you just respond like, yeah, like, hi, oh, like I heard it as in like uh, acknowledging the question. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, but back to this whole swamp man thing. I think possibly if she is, you know, she's a Soma with the same appearance and personality mm -hmm. as the previous and one. memories, except, but, well, yeah, same memories. But she's really a swamp man, mm -hmm. quote unquote, Soma. Maybe she has a different ability. Right. Maybe she doesn't have the ability. Mm -hmm. So maybe that in itself is a way to escape her fate. The fate of the witch. The fate of yeah. the witch. And end up not being locked in a room by the Bureau, who they has been made out to seem very evil yeah throughout the whole show throughout so. the whole show they mm -hmm. seem even though they're supposed to be this we protect everyone by looking over all the powers because they seem very not <laughs> right yeah, and we do good. have the scene where we finally see k when he's young and mm -hmm. he first when arrives he first gets there yeah they're like oh you have this ability but because it's remembering everything mm -hmm. we can't let you leave right. the city because you will just remember all of mm -hmm. these abilities. And that kind of goes against the fact that like when people leave the city, they forget about their abilities. Every like basically their memories of Sakurada are like gone and they don't have the ability anymore. Mm -hmm. But he kind of contradicts that. So there's like, you can't leave. Yeah. We're going to keep you here. We'll pay for everything for you. Like, so all, normally all when that. people leave, they lose their memories of their abilities and then ever using their abilities. Yes. And abilities in general and abilities in general. So then wouldn't he forget about other people's abilities? No, because no. his ability is to remember. It's just to remember. You'd think, though, that it would still apply. I guess it, it does make a good loophole, though. I I could yeah. see it going either way. Yeah, yeah. But so he remember because he can pot. Because essentially I don't think they he know like he will, but it could be that they're like, maybe they the don't want to risk it. Yeah, they don't yeah. want to risk him going out and being like, mm, his thing is all about memory. Maybe we shouldn't let him out there and be like, hey, Sakurada has all these people that do cool right. things. Hey, and then NASA, like they get, get the a guy bunch of people stuff. like going over to Sakurada mm -hmm. and then gaining a bunch of gaining abilities powers, and then they them. lose control over everybody. Mm -hmm. Because the town just blows up or something. Because yeah. some guy gets the power to nuke things with his mind. And then, boom. It's gone. It's all gone. <laughs> it's all gone. Um, so, yeah. That's pretty much all that gets covered in Sakurada. Episode 11, we've just got Haruki trying to make, trying to make trying friends, to make friends. Mm -hmm. with uh, Nono. Yeah. The cat. Cat grill. The cat grill. And... Um, and then she tries to visit Kay when he's sick and she's having this existential crisis while doing it because she's like, I'm bothering him and I don't know what to get. Like, I need Dude. to get, oh, is it ice cream or peaches? <laughs> Dude, that was hilarious. She starts out first. She's like, okay, I'm going to visit him. And she grabs rice, the container and all that yeah. other shit. And then she's walking. She's like, oh. What does she stop for first? Oh, she's like, she oh, needs, I need. Yeah, uh, she needs a pickled, a pickled plum. Like pickled plum, that's good for you when you're sick. So she stops and she gets that, and then she's walking. She passes the sweet shop, and then she's like, wait, I'm pretty sure I heard somewhere that peaches are good for you when you're sick, and you're supposed to bring them when you visit somebody. Okay, I'm gonna go get peaches, and she turns around and she gets the peaches, or she tries to get the peaches, and they're like, we're sold out. And she's like, what do I do? What do I do? And then she's like, if only I, and she, so she tries to call Nono. Nono's asleep with the cat. She's like, I need an expert. <gasps> they have one right here. I'll ask the lady. And so she asks the lady and the lady's like, well, if you're sick, you get ice cream. And she's like, do you have peach ice cream? She's like, no, we have apple. And she's like, crap, what do I do? It's not peaches, but I'm pretty sure I heard somewhere that you also bring apples. Uh, okay. And then she gets the apple ice cream and then she makes it all the way to the, like the stairs, essentially. She's like on the street in front of his building. And she's like, I'm just going to go home. <laughs> I'm bothering him. And then she turns around and then she gets a text that's like, hey, I'm craving ice cream for some reason. Can you bring it? And then she's like, oh, that's wait. Kay he would, would never, never say, say that. that. <laughs> like, and then I'm like, what the fuck is 
is wrong with you? I was I was just thinking I'm gonna be so triggered if she gets there and then turns around and then she turned around <laughs> uh, and then the girl is like you should go there and then you have to remember to feed it to him or whatever and then yeah. she's like okay I'm gonna go and then it ends right there, but it was a pretty you know it was a lulzy episode. It, it was like a a totally different from all episode from all like the the previous ones mm-hmm. it, there's not much going on it's just kind of Haruki's character development mm-hmm. which was nice because until yeah. now she hasn't had any she really didn't develop that far in the episodes besides kind of making a friend with Nono and um ghost girl she kind of seems to be making a friend with and then she's kind of it's like the first steps in her character development but yeah she hasn't really changed yet um, she's changed a little bit and basically the only change in her is, so if we go back to episode nine, she's having this, you know, she doesn't want to reset cause she's afraid of, you know, like being hated by Kay. Mm-hmm. And then he's kind of like, well, it's not your power. That's like, you know, causing all of the, like causing things to happen, like Soma's death. It's actually, you know, like the decisions that people make. In between, we know, mm-hmm. which is why he like tries to re- do the same actions. just do everything mm-hmm. exactly how he did it before. Right. He's the only one at risk of changing his actions, though. Yeah. Because he remembers. But he's only responsible for himself. Right. He can't, you know. But nobody else should. Nobody I mean, I else. Guess, technically, nobody else should, should change, change anything action. because he's the only one that remembers that they switched. That they switched. Whereas he'd be like, I read this, I'm going to do something else. Yeah. So it's actually him that is like the wild card Mm -hmm. card quote unquote because Mm -hmm. he's the one that can actually change how things occur i also think though soma and the witch could be wild cards because they know what's Mm -hmm. gonna happen they know what's gonna happen so they know that they're gonna reset at a specific time and then they go back and they're like they could look at themselves be like i think the reset happened and then they could do something else so i think for the same well i don't know if soma's power well maybe maybe if the time if it resets and then he changes something Maybe when they do look at the future, they see a different future. Mm-hmm. And since they don't remember the past um, future prediction, like they don't know that it's a new Right, and they future. act differently. Right. Mm-hmm. But if they were to do it before the reset, uh, would they still do the same action? Like, Because if they, oh, yeah, they look at the future and then they reset a day after that, like, yeah. and then they're like, well... Somebody they look at the future again different. and it changed yeah. and they go oh a reset's gonna happen mm-hmm. or happened yeah yeah um yeah so maybe mm-hmm. that's convoluted yeah maybe it's a little too convoluted <laughs> quote unquote um but I think that's pretty much that's all that needs to be covered with mm-hmm. Sakurada yeah it was um not a ton happened but it's a lot of just added questions yeah. a little bit of resolution because i mean i've been looking forward to seeing soma come back because mm-hmm. i thought she was a cool character when they first had her we, we had the whole first season to, yep, to get her back but that back. that's that's typical anime <laughs> they're like oh we're gonna kill this person off at the beginning but then they come back at the end of it um i think i i enjoyed these past three episodes though yeah. i think I'll, except the third the third one was just funny it's just the two before yeah. were actually pretty interesting though mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Um, so moving on, why don't we talk a little bit about Akasha? Are you looking, what are you looking for? I was looking for my phone to see the time, but, uh, it, yeah, we got time. Okay. Um, I was just trying to see like how long we were going for. Uh, we've been going for like 20 minutes. Okay. Maybe like 18, something mm-hmm. like that. We could, a couple more minutes. Yeah. 10. Um, so Akashic Records, we haven't talked about this too much in like we haven't talked about it at all on the podcast for a while Mm -hmm. um maybe a couple episodes we talked about it yeah cut it um basically what happened in the last episode um was did you watch this last week's Mm -hmm. i've seen it i'm just they're blurring yeah so what happens in this last episode is we've got leos the the guy oh crazy guy yeah the crazy teacher that comes in and is like i'm gonna marry sistine Mm -hmm. is like probably being controlled by you know the the guy that the maid chick resurrected from the organization you know the guy with riel's brother no the guy with the top hat who's that you know the guy that he that leos was talking to driving the cart yeah i thought that was riel's brother no he had the same face no 
Who is that then? It's the guy that got resurrected. Which guy got resurrected? So you know how there's <laughs> the Project Real Life? That's yeah. where Rio came from? Uh huh. They took that information and the maid stole it, right? Yeah. She used that to resurrect the guy with the top hat. Oh, did they show that? They showed, they showed her resurrecting someone, right? Uh-huh. And then you hear a voice. It's the same voice. Oh, I must have missed that. Yeah, the same. <laughs> see, this is, this is like the same thing that happened. I was talking to my sister about it. Uh-huh. And she's like, what, what do you mean they resurrected the guy? I'm like, he has the same voice. And she's like, oh, I was like, yeah, sorry. They never really showed his face, but he has the same voice. I don't even think I remember the scene where they resurrected somebody, <laughs> to be honest. Because the reason I thought it was Riel's brother was because he's a resurrection person as well. And they kind of drew him the same, a similar face. It's just and his hair faces. is the same. Yeah. And so I was like, is that him? Because he has that bluish gray hair, but they always show him in the dark. So I'm like, maybe it's coming off as gray because in the dark, bluish gray would look gray. And so I'm like, oh, maybe it's just like the brother doing yeah. weird things but it's okay All but right. basically i think he's controlling leos with the angel dust because you know how that like it there was the whole incident with um sarah uh-huh. who uh who died um he she was like one of uh one of uh glenn's comrades you know back when he was in the magic core and she died in like a previous angel dust incident um i think what happened was she probably got mind controlled by the angel dust and like ended up like it's a drug, right? Yeah. Supposedly. Um, Heroin. And so I think this Leos is being mind controlled with this angel dust thing by that dude that he, got revived. He also has other motives too for yeah. marrying her to be the top of his family and all that. Yeah. I think it <clears throat> it's probably a drug that preys upon, you know, your like, deepest desires and like weaknesses mm-hmm. kind of thing so that's probably how they use it to control people right and so he's turned into like the sinister thing and like glenn is confused at how he's so strong mm-hmm. which i believe maybe this angel dust also increases your your power mm, like amplifies your mm-hmm. abilities and Could uh be. so but then it blows you up yeah bloody mess like it's, they found at the end of the episode, I believe. Yeah, they the saw guy like the, the guy in the alleyway. Mm-hmm. There's just blood everywhere. Mm-hmm. But we do end the episode with the confrontation between the two, mm-hmm. uh, between Glenn and Leos. And um, basically, he's got, I forgot what the spell name was, but it's basically not even magic. It's just like it's a hallucination. It thing. was a section or a, <clears throat> it's a un, like a not well-known uh, part of alchemy. Yeah. and But it like uses their imagination against them or something yeah like that. and he uses it to beat the shit out of glenn mm-hmm. i think what happens is like it probably like uses like these illusions to make it look like these things are attacking him but it's probably just the actual dude just like beating the shit out of him <laughs> you know like in reality right um so that happens and we've got Glenn doesn't even show up to the duel afterwards Mm -hmm. and then it's just like what's gonna happen right Right. it's kind of like a weird ending yeah well it was because the it was Sistine talking yeah and she's like and then Glenn never showed Glenn sensei never showed up to the school after that yeah but it's they never gave a a time frame was it like one day he didn't show up and she's freaking out or Or is it like like a a month a year yeah it's gonna be like two years later next episode or something like that and what's I'm curious what's going to happen to Sistine because now she's left alone with yeah. Leos making obvious advances and being crazy. Yeah. And apparently being threatened to marry him because mm-hmm. he's like, I'm going to tell the secrets of Riel yeah. and, and, and Rumia. Rumia. What yeah. I'm curious about, though, is if he's going to tell those secrets, like if he goes and he tells the secret of Rumia, wouldn't the the um empire just be like or the the queen be like kill that dude he's fucking shit up like i yeah i don't really know if like rumia's secret is a secret anymore because everyone kind of knows like the whole royal guard knows that she he, she is who she is mm-hmm. but they're and, not gonna and tell the organization anyone. knows who she is so it's like what like think, how is that even like a threat i think they don't want the people to know 
Yeah. Because I think it, the, it would make the empire look bad. Mm-hmm, because the, the queen kingdom. had a daughter who had this amplifier power and like, and she at, was supposed to have died. Mm-hmm. Well, all the people are afraid of people with those abilities yeah. is what they mentioned. And so they, and it's like supposed to be blasphemous or some shit like that, that, that certain people have these abilities. And so they don't want a member of the Royal family to have that ability. And then they're like, what? And then they're going to overthrow them and all this shit's going to happen. So I don't think it's necessarily that the evil people or the Royal guard or like the school knows, they just don't just want the majority. The country, yeah. yeah. And they don't want to get overthrown and have turmoil and yeah. shit. So I just honestly thought this was kind of a dumb development. I did too. And it's just like, <laughs> wow, you're really actually just trying to change and make this dumb development for the final episode. Is it the final episode? I think so. Oh, okay. Um, it could, maybe it's 13 episodes, but I think this next one is the last one. I hope they get another season because I want, otherwise I'm going to have to read it. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I don't think it's going to get another one. I don't think so either. There are what a lot I of shows like this so. that, you know, yeah. it's decent and like, you know, you kind of want to keep, see mm-hmm. it keep you going, but I don't think it's going to get another one. No, probably not. Unfortunately. It's just like, I guess they're trying to make it look like, oh, now Sistine's the damsel in distress. It's not Rumia this time. Mm-hmm. Well, I don't think Rumia, in the, as the show goes, is ever really a damsel in distress. She's just kind of, she's just kind in of an unlucky situation. In a situation a that she sometimes. actually can't get herself out yeah. of, but she's not like, save me. Whereas yeah. Sistina always seemed like, like a, helpless. A, a helpless damsel in distress. Yeah. Where, like, for at the beginning, when that dude's on top of her and she's like, no, please don't do it. Yeah. Whereas Rumia would be like, fuck you, do what you want, but I ain't telling shit. Like, yeah, she's uh, like, you can fucking kill me and do whatever you want, but I will never give in. So yeah. like, that's why I, I kind of like Rumia's character mm-hmm. because she's she's got like a strong will and personality. Mm-hmm. She's whereas, got balls. <laughs> yeah. Whereas Sistine's kind of like, Wimpy. you know, your typical Cinderella character that's <laughs> like, yeah. Eh. I don't like like you. Save me. But I really love you. Save me. (laughs) But I can't do anything. Except I can do things. I think it comes from a product of their past, though. Sistine was, you know, she was babied. Her parents love her and she never had an issue. And Rumia had, yeah, she was (laughs) the daughter of the queen who was like, I don't want you. And then leave. And then a bunch of people tried to get her. her. And so Glenn killed a ton of people to save her. And she has all these memories, just hideous memories of dead people and blood everywhere. And it's like, I guess after those experiences, either you break or you become a stronger person. And clearly she didn't break. Otherwise, she'd probably be dead. But. And then Riel has a pretty mm-hmm. bloody past, but I still don't like her. <laughs> uh, she's the clone, so yeah, I don't, I don't mind her too much. She was annoying, and then she got a little better. I liked it the when they had the duel, though the the battle between the two teams or oh, whatever, yeah, and, and the whole was, team's trying to fight her, and she's like, dodge, she, dodge, dodge, dodge. Hey guys, like, <laughs> that's not fair. She's like actually a soldier in yeah, the mage corps. She, she's actually a special forces mage, like, <laughs> and he's just like. <laughs> <laughs> Riel, go fight those two teams like by yourself. <laughs> like, and they're, they're trying to like thunder shock her or whatever, and she's just like, dodge, dodge, dodge. Hey, I'm here. And he's like, can you kill that person? No, dude, she's crazy. And he's like, oh, I if you didn't, I didn't know you had pawns like that. And it's like, yeah. Well, that was pretty funny. Yeah. Also, that whole scene where he was running through the forest, pulling all the traps, going, oh, yeah. ha, ha, ha. Like, <laughs> he's like purposely being an asshole. Yeah. And he's acting like an evil villain yeah. with his terrible laugh. That was that, that I was laughing a lot during that whole thing. It's like he does it on purpose and it's funny. Mm-hmm. But I just don't understand how Sistine is just like retarded and like can't even understand that. Like he's clearly doing it on yeah. purpose. He's clearly trolling. He's clearly <laughs> trolling and he's doing it to just piss off the dude Mm -hmm. he's not doing it to be like oh like like i really want to marry you for your money and like that kind of stuff he's doing it because he he really cares about her and like doesn't want her to end up with stupid leo leo who is kind of an asshole kind of okay he's (laughs) He's very much an asshole you can see it at the end of the at the end of the um mage duel the, thing yeah the, the between the two between the classes. two teams when 
Glenn comes and they won, but they like kind of struggled. And he he gave them a different method of doing it because he was like, "You guys aren't going to be able to do this like highly specialized thing." And he's like, "You did good, good job." And the other guy's like, "You failed. You, I can't believe you didn't. I can't do yeah, this. I taught you the most efficient way of winning and blah blah blah, but you still didn't do it." And it's like it goes to show like the difference between the two. So mm-hmm. it's like Leos is kind of admired as this like great knowledgeable teacher because mm-hmm. he's a researcher and is accomplished and like teaches things in a very easy to understand way mm-hmm. but he's there's a good a, teacher there's a difference between understanding how to teach something and understanding what to teach to your students right what they're capable of what at they're this capable point of. in time so that's the difference <clears throat> so like glenn we know is a good teacher and can explain things very well but whether it's ex- like teaching something that is seen as the most optimal solution, which is what Leos does, versus what is the best to teach to your students, which mm-hmm. is what Glenn does. Mm-hmm. Um, Just like it, we saw with the shock ability. Yeah. When he was like, well, all you guys know how to do is shock, but there's like all these other things that you can do with shock. You can make it curve. You can make it go sideways and yeah. he's like you need to understand the fundamentals and then that goes to the you know the broader understanding it's like well there's a, the wind ability the other yeah. abilities if you know that you can do this with this one what can you do with the other ones and so it gets them asking you know it's a better teacher because yeah. it makes them ask their own questions just like and Socrates he teaches and to their that. to their abilities mm-hmm. whereas like leos is like you need to do this mm-hmm. because like this is what the military needs and like, this all is good that stuff this Be- is the most efficient thing mm-hmm. where it's like yeah, he teaches it in a very easy way way to understand. Excuse me. But this is stuff that Glenn is like hesitant to teach the kids because he's like, well, I mean, you're teaching them how to kill people without, you know, giving them the showing them the consequences mm-hmm. and like the weight behind what they're learning. It's like giving a baby a button and the button launches a nuke. Exactly. And the baby's like, ooh, click. <laughs> and then it blows up, you know. Five million people like it doesn't it it ha- it has this ability to do it but mm-hmm. it doesn't you know have the understanding of like oh like i should use this only against something that's completely evil and is trying to and there's no destroy. other method there's no to, other method mm-hmm. whereas like leos is like do, here this is what you need to do do this it this is gonna win us it and yeah. then it doesn't so it also shows the difference between because leos doesn't have any sort of practical Applications, applications for the things he does whereas glenn was a special forces member yeah and he's like well like i could teach you this and you could do it but you're gonna fail and we're gonna lose so let's do something that you can actually do and it's pro and i know a way that we can beat that method because i've probably been a part of that method yeah. and i know how it works and we're gonna do guerrilla warfare and all this other crap and then you just shut them showed, down it shows this understanding so leos has this understanding in a broader sense like this is the most efficient way of doing something Whereas Glenn understands things at a fundamental level Mm -hmm. and the reason why something, let's say, would be the most optimal or the most efficient. Mm -hmm. He understands the process behind it, whereas like Leo's kind of only understands this is the most optimal. Mm -hmm. Because I read it in a book. It's like a shallow (laughs) understanding versus a detailed understanding. Mm -hmm. Because I read it in a book. Yeah, exactly. (laughs) Rather than read it in a book and then practiced it. It's like while Glenn may not have like the highest monopole, and like you know ability to and it's kind of stupid sometimes yeah. he does he does have a deeper understanding of magic and so he's able to use magic more effectively than other people i think that's because of celica too or is it celica which one not celica i'm thinking of fire of faith the <laughs> teacher the girl teacher with the big yeah, boobs it's celica. it's celica oh it is okay fire emblem fates as well <laughs> i think because she's supposed to be like this great teacher and yeah. one of the strongest sh- like she's a special forces mage too, I think, or she has she a designation. She was a former. She was a former mage corps. And she was member. like number one or something. something. I don't know. She's supposed to be like t- tip top yeah. of like and mages, and she he by was the taught way, by her disappeared for a bit because like she went into that underground library thing mm-hmm. and, and she, like started said something pretty ominous about researching more yeah. or something. Yeah, yeah. And this was after she talks to Sistine about like <clears throat> going to the. She was like the people who the continue in the sky doing and, foolish things yeah. are the one who make progress and the ones who give up do nothing or something like so that. So I'm wondering what she's going to do because we haven't seen her like in a bit mm-hmm. and there's this whole situation going on with the angel dust and now Leos is like essentially 
blackmailing Sistine into marrying him. Mm -hmm. And I'm curious to see what she does because she's supposed to be like a super badass. Yeah. And we haven't seen anything from her where she's like, she's just kind of like, I can't do anything. They'll kill people. She put up a barrier once. Yeah, like this huge barrier. (laughs) And she's like, nobody can get in because I'm dope as fuck. And she just like ruins it. But I want to see her like fight someone and just like blow them up right. like annihilate somebody which based off of her backstory and the things we've heard from her is easily accomplished yeah. for her it seems like if anybody were to try to go up against her she'd be like do you really want to do and this I mean, <laughs> yeah. we know like glenn's a pretty like badass dude and mm-hmm. like he's like her apprentice mm-hmm. so and his his abilities as a mage are less compared to hers yeah he's got that fool's card he's got the he fool's card which beat is people up like something he developed on his own and mm-hmm. again the understanding of how magic works it's at a own, fundamental level what is it what do they call it um it's like unique, unique magic magic yeah. something like that like pe- different a couple people have their own unique magic yeah. and he's one of like i don't know 13 they said or some yeah. shit there it's was a number he has this true understanding of how magic mm-hmm. works like it's kind of like um if you apply it to something like sports it's like you can have a deep understanding of how to throw a football Mm -hmm. and like how to throw it well, but you may not have like the superior arm strength to throw it, like throw it, throw a good deep ball, but you're very accurate and precise with like throwing it within a certain range on the Mm -hmm. field. Like that quarterback would be very, would be very good and efficient leading, leading an offense that, you know, is very calm and controlled Mm -hmm. versus a quarterback that can just like throw these random Hail Marys. Right. And, um, like, you know, maybe like a physical prodigy compared to someone, you know, like completely understands like Mm -hmm. the technique. Uh, Right. So, but then you've got Drew Brees who who could throw the Hail Marys super accurately accurately. (laughs) and while being like a short quarterback. (laughs) Right. I, when he was doing the, the one, the Super Bowl a few years ago against the Colts. I think so. Yeah. yeah, it was it was a while ago, right? Yeah. yeah, and you they did the replays of him throwing the ball, and they were like, "All right, watch this square," and it's like arm here, arm underneath to the right, and then the it's like swoop right between all yeah. the arms, and the receiver's like, "Boop, got it," yeah. <laughs> and then just runs on. It's like how how do you put a ball there? I don't, anyways, anyways, yeah. we're getting off topic. We're but, off topic, but like yeah. you know, it's like that's the kind of thing. It's like you know, understanding the fundamentals mm-hmm. and being able to apply that. Whereas you may not have, you know, the physical genius, right? You know, the mm-hmm. natural talent, right? Yeah. But all in all, I liked the season, the series. If there yeah. is another episode, um, I definitely think it's worth watching mm-hmm. the series, and then you can see if you, because I'm probably going to continue reading. If there isn't another series, I'm probably going to continue reading anyways because yeah. I want to know what happens. Um, it, I don't know if it's going if this ending is going to be anime original, mm, or so. right. I'll, I'll probably go check it out and see, like, cause I've so far I've liked it. Um, I kind of like the some of the characters, yeah. some of them not so much, but I want to see what happens. So I'm gonna I'm gonna check it out. From yeah. Here. Unfortunately, like shows like these are usually just to garner interest for the light novels, and and manga. So mm-hmm. this is probably a one off. I like series. watching things more than reading yeah. things. This is probably a one off series. It's probably gonna have an anime original ending and. Unfortunately, that's just how it is. Um, I hope this last episode wasn't the ending. It's not very. It's not the ending. Okay, there's another episode. There has to be because it's like, oh, yeah. and then he never showed I up. I think it's got twelve episodes. Is okay. what it's was this the eleventh? Oh, it that was. was the eleven. Yeah. So there's that, and then like on a similar note, we're not getting any more Konosuba for the time for any time. Unfortunately. Unfortunately, because that shit was great. It was. It was a. Uh, it was confirmed in one of the recent light novels by the author that for the time being, there will no longer be any anime collaboration mm. with Konosuba. That's a bummer because that show is hilarious. Yeah. That is, it's a, it's, it's, it's a conundrum because it's selling very well. Mm-hmm. It's a very popular series, and they're they're um, ami- not amiibos. Um, the figures mm, yeah yeah the, the all nendroids. the, the nendoroids and all that yeah. like all their merchandise is selling like crazy yeah i know for a fact that even the like the body pillow things because they're on crunchyroll those are sold out all yeah. the time the nendoroids are all sold out like you go i was looking on different sites for konosuba merchandise it's always sold out yeah. it's like it's really popular worldwide yeah and it's 
it's a conundrum, right? So it's like, do they keep milking this, this, um, series or do they not? Essentially the idea behind the first season was they were going to make this to garner interest in the light novels. It's just a thing that Kadokawa, like the publisher group does. Mm -hmm. They just like make a bunch of anime for their various light novels and stuff so that people will go out and buy them. And I mean, it's, it's successful. Mm -hmm. People are buying the light novels. But now that the increase in sale of the Konosuba light novels like has like you know grown exponentially, they're like, all right, we don't need to make any more anime. We can just you know like kind of but that's use that stupid. budget for series. <laughs> that's just kind of dumb though. It's dumb, but like I can understand. I, I mean, feel like I maybe we'll probably get you know some OVAs like here and there. That would be nice. But l- I just I don't I don't know because you could still sell both. Yeah. If you if you you know. If you uh, possibly have maybe a different story in the anime as opposed to the light novel, people are like, oh, what did they write in the light novel? I watched the anime, you know, and if people find out that they kind of followed a different story in the Konosuba anime and they're like, well, I want to go watch this, watch this because it's hilarious. But I bet this is hilarious as as well. It's like two different stories. I'm going to read both like or watch one and then read that because i'm like whoever's making this is a comedic genius because (laughs) konosu was fucking hilarious he he may not be like the best at like writing like stories and stuff Mm -hmm. but he's really good this author at turning whatever he's written into just comedic gold yeah it's hilarious (laughs) it's so funny like when they were being chased by the uh by all the birds yeah and and who was it on the back darkness is being thrown around on the road and she's like i love this (laughs) (laughs) and everyone and everyone's looking at um God, what was his name? What was At the Kazuma. Guy? Kazuma, like he's this pervert, and he's like, "No, this is just the the method." Like, oh, no, but a they're pervert. but they're looking at Dark. He's like, "Oh wow, she's so brave." Yeah. and then he's just like, "I'm so sorry, <laughs> she's the reason why right. we're in this mess in the first place." <laughs> that's right. Like all the zombies yeah. show up, and they're all like, "Oh, thanks for stopping that's us." I'm like, so sorry. It's Aqua's <laughs> fault. <laughs> I'm sorry. It's my party. Yeah, <laughs> they're I'm causing so sorry. all this. <laughs> It's uh, it's such a good. It's such a. I don't know. They should. Make, yeah. I wish they would make more. But it's unfortunate. Unfortunately, they're not. Um. <sighs> all right. Well, yeah. since that's basically all we wanted to cover today, is there anything else you wanted to talk about before we uh and wrap this up? I'm just gonna give some shout outs to some shows I'm watching. The Zero Kara Maho No sh- Blah 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 yeah. Blah. That one's been really good. Um. So far, it's gotten pretty interesting with the develops developments they're making with uh if you're keeping up 13 and who he actually is and then um and then uh the mercenary and zero and all that and then same with albus it's just been kind of like all these twists and turns and it's actually i mean some of them were obvious but they were still interesting nonetheless um and then sword oratoria is a nice addition to the is it wrong to pick up chicks in a dungeon shit um it's a really nice addition because it's, it's kind of darker than the original um, there's a lot of like dark themes and, and like comrades killing each other and, and murder and stuff like that. So it's kind of a, a change to it. And it does have, you know, those moments where it overlaps with the original series, but it's adding a lot of this depth where you, I went back a couple times, I would watch one episode and then I went back and I watched the episode before and after that were about this one to get, be like, Oh yeah, this is, and then you kind of like tie in the two things and it's really cool to do that. Um, so those two shows, I definitely recommend watching both of them, um, especially if you've seen the first part of Is It Wrong to Pick Up the, I forget, Don Girls Machi. In the Dungeon. Yeah. yeah, Girls in the Dungeon. Yeah, that one. All right, cool. I think what we'll do is um, we'll probably do another special like this in the next few days where like, I still haven't done my coverage of Saikano just because, you know, so busy with work and right. stuff. Things are going on. Things are going on. Life life um we can do something where like i'll cover you know sai kano you can cover mahono show and sword oratoria maybe drew can cover some of the shows he's been watching i don't know what he's been watching we can bring it up maybe we can do it um you know sometime this weekend Mm -hmm. or maybe yeah yeah. right after when we record the uh, the podcast podcast. yeah Mm -hmm. it'll be like a separate little thing it doesn't Mm -hmm. have to be very long right Cool. That's a good idea. We can do that. All right. Well, uh, thank you for sticking with us in this uh, Sakurada special. Akashic Records. Other stuff special. Other stuff special. <laughs> um, this is the kind of content we're probably going to 
be putting out, especially next season, mm -hmm. where the podcast will cover a majority of stuff that all of us are covering. But for anything that maybe one of us or two of us are, are watching that not all of us are going through, we'll probably be doing these one off, not maybe not one off, but like these little separate mm -hmm. side more projects. Off, yeah. And you should see stuff like this more often right. next season of anime than this one where still really new to this and trying to figure out Figuring the podcast on its own, own as well as like how to balance it with just life exactly. work and and all that and trying to figure out when we can record and you know what we're all Everything, watching and yeah what shows two of us are watching and what it's kind of content we're going to put out. So it's, yeah, it's just a lot of things we're, we're still figuring it out. So bear with us, but you know, I want to throw it out there cause I have noticed we've gotten a lot more views from when we yeah. first started. So I definitely want to thank everybody who's watching. Um, and we hope you're enjoying it as much as we like recording it. Cause I've yep. been having a blast. It's been making really all these episodes, all yeah. especially last week's yeah. podcast when we had that beer, that oh. beer, I um, had a good time. <laughs> I thought it was pretty one. funny because like I knew I was going to name it like 10% alcohol by volume. Uh -huh. ABV. <laughs> but it's it's episode 10. So it kind of fits, Oh, and it's 10%? Right? Oh, I didn't so realize I that until right now. The way the way that fit. Right. So there's that. So I'll leave you guys today with our WordPress, animeondraft.wordpress.com. You will find links to our Twitter, Instagram, um, which we need to use more Facebook. Yes. Um, you will also find, you know, links to YouTube where you will find this content. And then you will also find a very nice little page called the contact page. So please, please, please give us any sort of feedback. We are looking forward to seeing comments, questions, you know, anything. Maybe if you guys have any suggestions for stuff you want to see us cover, if you want to give us any feedback for what we're doing. If you thought something was good, if you want to see more of something, if you thought something could use improvement. Exactly. And you don't want to put it in a Twitter message or a YouTube comment. We read that, all that stuff. So, so be your recommendations. Please use that page. We will, we will try our best to integrate whatever suggestions or feedback that you give us. And as well, we will be looking to go to Anime Expo july 1st through the 4th what days specifically we haven't figured out but look out for us there if you're going to be at anime expo in los angeles this july um feel free to hit us up on that contact page maybe if any if people want to meet up we can talk um you know chat chat a little bit meet up with the mm -hmm. uh, fans whatever all right well that's uh it. That's been anime on draft today. Um, our drink of choice tonight, we forgot, to, forgot mention, to mention that, was I had a gin and tonic. I and had a gin and ginger ale. I like had a gin and Not ginger ale. Not a tonic ale. fan. Um, we had Hendrix gin. Hendrix gin. And then whatever brand of ginger ale and It's probably tonic. Canada dry or something. Yeah, Canada dry ginger ale. I'm pretty sure it's Canada, Canada dry, dry tonic. tonic. Yeah, and then you had a little lime. I, I had a little splash of lime. So. And then we had some ice in there. There it's pretty simple. Yep. Um, it's 70, 30, 70, 30, 70% tonic ginger ale. Normally I have like 60, 40, but I didn't want to get, you know, too, too drunk tonight because I'm going to be doing more drinking later. But, <laughs> <laughs> um, cool. Well, uh, thanks for listening and watching. Please like, and subscribe and we will see you next time later on everybody.